Hi everybody! Feeling back weighted? Having sore neck during competition or practice? Is it hard for you to hold your arms up? If any of this is about you, this lesson is going to be helpful. This is Yaroslav and Lilia and we would like to fix all popular mistakes in standard for you right now. So let's get started. Mistake number one. Uh, many ladies often say that their head uh, feels strange or their neck muscles hurt during the dance. So this is a very popular mistake, head misalignment in relation to the rest of the body. Now, when we do something strange with our head and neck, neck muscles get very tight and therefore we experience uh, bad pain. So basically what we have to do in order to fix this problem, we have to think about alignment first. So what I would like you to do, I would like you to take your index finger and place it on your chin. Now when you do that, the next movement is going to be moving your finger in to tuck your chin in. What this does, this places your skull on top of the vertebra, on top of the last vertebra on your spine. And this does align your head with the rest of your body nicely. Now once you're in this position, then what you have to do, you have to activate your body underneath that head in order for your head to stay relatively still. Whatever actions happen during we dance happen underneath the head in our body either rotation or sway, our neck is not involved in those actions. So here is a popular mistake when ladies start to sort of add on to their body action or increase their shape, their curve with their neckline. This is when the necks get very, very sore and here is where the troubles come from. I also would like to add that our skull, uh, the, the main action of the skull is in rotary plane. So all I can do with the skull itself, I can rotate it to the left or to the right, or I can keep it still and allow my body rotate underneath as uh, Lilia just mentioned. But I definitely cannot do with the skull something like that. That's the action basically with my spine, with my neck, that we are trying not to show while we are dancing. And many times this soreness comes exactly from this action where we are all doing our best during competition or practice or round and then at the very end of at the very end of an action and the upswing we do this Break. extra action with the neck that breaks the line and makes you feel uncomfortable. Uh, I would like to ask Lilia just to take position by herself in practice hold. In practice hold, stay still, put your Tuck your chin in. Now, if you may do the rotation to the left of the skull only, correct? Now, without breaking the neckline, she can definitely do sway or rotation to the left. Or she can do combination of uh, both actions. Let's do a little bit of rotation and a little bit of sway. Now, if she puts her feet together and go up on her toes and use a little bit more ankle to create the curve, Correct. So now we can see Lilia stays there in a beautiful position, a very challenging one, but if she places her hands in the dance hold, and then if I come in and we pretend like we finished our natural turn, that's basically the curve we're trying to create. So it goes from her feet through her ankles and it balances uh, with your scalp. Thank you very much Lilia. Good job. <laughs> Very often we hear and we see that people struggle with holding their crane. So some people say, my arms are getting tired. Or they hear from their teacher or their partner that they are kind of heavy and the arms are pressing down onto them. So the very popular mistake here is what we're trying to do with our shoulder blades. Because our arms are connected to our shoulder blades and we want to keep the, um, our arms upwards, we have to also think of our shoulder blades supporting those arms. So here is the action that we actually do with our shoulder blades. We must always maintain the shoulder blades forward and slightly up. This action is called upward rotation. When both shoulder blades are moving away from the spine up and forward, and this will support our arms up and, fo up and forward. 
forth. Now the most popular mistake is when we squeeze our shoulder blades either back or down or all together back and down. This is exactly where our arms are going to go back and down, which is impossible for us to keep hold together with our partner who is in front of us and also makes our arms very tired because we basically try to pick them up but we're squeezing them down at the same time. So that's the solution. Lydia, may I ask you to do this uh, action one more time and I just would like to show you. If I really place my uh, hand on the shoulder blade in a neutral position and then I will follow her shoulder blade as she does it. You see, my, uh, my hand right now went away from her spine and slightly more up. So this is quite a natural action that, that you all guys can uh, practice at home. You don't even need to stand up sometimes. Sometimes I'm really doing it while uh, sitting on the sofa. And uh, I would like to add that these mistakes is not only for ladies. It really goes both ways. So for ladies, I would like you uh, to see it in a way that hand of the partner, especially the right hand, is right there under your shoulder blade. So therefore, if you squeeze your shoulder blade down, that's the immediate feel that, I, uh, that we are going to get from you. And you might not be falling or you might not be even heavy, but because your, uh, the direction of that shoulder blade is going down, it gives me the feel of heaviness that, of course, no one's going to like. Plus, you are going to feel a little bit stuck with that. Now, left hand, same problem. If I'm holding you here, and then suddenly Lydia presses her shoulder down, which she never does, but now immediately I feel that this reference point starts moving, now I feel like she is heavy. Yeah. Uh, for, for the guys, so your lady partners or partners will not feel you as heavy, uh, particularly if you're, uh, necessarily if you are doing this mistake. But what they might experience is if we stay together in position and then suddenly I put my shoulders down or backwards, now it will really influence uh, my posture, basically. Posture, yes, of Lilia or whoever you dance with. Because what happens is that the space that you create between your hand and your chest gets uh, shorter. So in that space, sometimes it's impossible to fit in. So that's why uh, you will see the, the break of the posture. Yes, and what I would like to add on just a little, uh, little remark here that we often very focused especially as ladies or as men as well, we are very often focused on the left shoulder blade only and the right shoulder blade sort of uh, disregard. Uh, so this is a very balanced action that must be done on both shoulder blades at the same time because you want both of your arms up at the same time. Yes. So now we are going to the next one. This is one of my favorite ones because I hear it very often in the studio from uh, other teachers. I hear students complain. Uh, Sometimes I have the same mistake and this is something everybody has to be focused on all the time. So the mistake is I have my butt sticking out. Yeah, I heard this many, uh, many times. So uh, now the, the solution and the reason for that mistake can be several things here and they are not necessarily that obvious sometimes. But nevertheless we have to check those few things. So. Uh, the first thing I would like to start about butt sticking out is position of your ribcage. So let's say we're standing here perfectly aligned, everything is good, we're having a good time. Now, when we take position together, this is a subject of different video, but I just would like to go in the ribcage uh, right now. So when we get together and we're about to create, uh, to create our curve to, uh, to connect with each other, as a result of that we have the body contact. Sometimes people forget about that. So what they're doing, they're trying to create body contact immediately through this ribcage part. As you can see on the video, my butt is already sticking out. And I even... <laughs> started dancing. <laughs> started, yeah. So basically, if I compete, I go here and I put my ribcage forward. That's it. For me, competition is over because my alignment is off, my posture is gone, my weight is not going to move through the foot. And I don't think I'm going to be having such a great time really, especially with my partner. 
by myself, maybe I can survive. Together, forget it. So, rib cage too much forward causes the distortion in the pelvis, so the pelvis goes back. Now, Lilia laughs at me all the time that I tend to exaggerate when I show the mistake. But I would like this you to see. I would like you to see that going on. So we can see that Head the pelvis the has tilted forward. Therefore, you have that table pointing backwards because actually you have shifted the rib cage. That might be happening because you're trying to keep contact with your partner. But again, you're keeping contact in the wrong body part. Yes, and the neck is gone as well. So Many those things are. There. Quite related. Sometimes you want to look at all of those mistakes, problems at the same time just to, to be cautious about it. Another reason for butt sticking out can be uh, the timing of your uh, leg in relationship to your movement. So, what do I mean by that? I am about to go backwards, and then the first action I'm doing is something like that. So, as you can see right now, my leg is already backwards. My body hasn't moved yet. I still have the trip cage too much in front of my pelvis. As a result, my butt is sticking out. In that position, if I close my feet, you see what's going on. And that's the kind of the line that people will see from outside. So the solution to that is we always have to make sure that when we open our leg, first of all, we're doing it with the correct timing. So we have to use our ankle joint, start our body flying backwards as the body goes the timing between the moving leg and the body has to be as precise as possible now another thing is when we actually do open the moving leg backwards we have to remember it's not because we tilt our pelvis backwards that we open our leg it's because we bend our hip joint and as we're bending our hip joint, we're allowing the leg to go backwards. So right now, if I want to have straighter leg as a look, even though it's not necessarily what we're looking for, I don't need to think about straightening the leg and to cause this distortion. What I need to do is to think about ankle joint of the standing leg plus the movement of the body backwards. I will automatically get my straight leg for a little fraction of time and uh, I will complete my step without having the butt up. Very good, Yaroslav. Another thing what I would like to add about this problem is that of course it can cause many uncomfortable feelings in your lower back. When you're misaligned or you're moving backwards or forward in a bad timing, you're going to have a lot of unnecessary contraction in the lower back area because of that forward tilt in your pelvis. So of course to prevent injuries and to make your dancing more uh, enjoyable, enjoyable <laughs> and uh, prolong your professional careers maybe um, you have to take care of all those things so you don't cause any muscular problems here uh, just the last very very uh, short comment on that of course we must not forget about our center our abdominal muscles because those will be the muscles that will be will help us to keep this part in the correct alignment. So even though I am doing a good job here, but I forgot about my abdominal muscles, I still have a chance to, uh, to get to this position. So they all work very much in sync with each other, and you have to remember that a lot of times just thinking about one thing is not enough, unfortunately. So the combination of abdominal muscles together with your uh, bending of the hip joints correct way and not letting the pelvis go back, I think will be really helpful at all times. Yes, thank you, Arisa. A mistake, very often ladies uh, do that, or men sometimes as well. Uh, we hear that and we see that, and this is the scary word, backweighted. Yes. What can we suggest oh, for that? I have many conversations with my students about this, and uh, it's all more scary than it really is actually. So being backweighted only means few things. Thing number one is you have trouble with your uh, timing and direction. You have to know your direction and timing obviously, but you have to actually redirect yourself on time. So it happens very very often 
when, uh, let's say I'm doing natural turn going backwards. So I'm going backwards with my left leg. As I'm going backwards and I start my rotation, I will be doing the side step here. Right after I'm in the middle between my feet, as I'm closing my feet, I already redirect myself and I prepare my movement forward. So sometimes, if you can see me doing it, I'm just doing it very casually right now. I'm going to go back, I'm going to do side step, but I will be still moving backwards. By the time I close my feet, I am not ready to go forward. So therefore, I'm back -weighted. People are trying to fix or be focused on posture sometimes, but posture is not the cause for us uh, to be backweighted. Timing and direction is very, very often. I would say, in my experience, 95% of the, of the of time. Of course, I would say sometimes it is happening when we set up and when we build our position, our posture, sometimes can, can be the cause from the very beginning, but most of the time we do get backweighted when we don't redirect. Or in other words, we stop our body from moving, so we get stuck in position and yes. then also fall backwards. Uh, can I add one little thing well, about course. being backweighted and how to fix it? If we just change places here, when we set up, very often what we see from the ladies is again uh, having a lot of ribcage action and a lot of bend through the spine without uh, doing anything in our legs and ankles. So when we create that curve, when we're coming into the partner, again, when we try to search for contact in our ribs and we only bend uh, our spine, only do the upper body action uh, without engaging our legs and ankles, that is what sometimes, what sometimes may cause this problem as well. So if we take position and we have that little distance between Yaroslav and me, the first thing that I want to do, I want to flex my ankle joint and that is going to bring me in contact with Yaroslav. So I don't have to do anything extra with my uh, top, with my back. And therefore I won't be back weighted. So I send my energy forward through the ankle joint and that develops my curve. Now, those 5% of times when I'm talking to somebody and trying to fix that uh, problem is actually when person who moves backwards is not doing big enough step. So that stuff can uh, happen, and I've seen that happening a uh, few times. So, believe it or not, but sometimes I see people doing good ankle, <laughs> which is already a big surprise. Then we are moving the spine backwards, and everything is going well until this moment. So right now, of course I'm exaggerating Lilia as always, but my step was so small for no reason, then my body was doing a good job, but I'm still backweighted. So now if you feel backweighted in this particular situation, your posture is fine. What you have to fix is your moving leg to go a little bit more backwards, so you arrive in this position. So right now suddenly, I used to be backweighted, now I'm perfectly well. Now again I'm backweighted, now again I'm fine. So again, it goes... Uh, together with the timing and the sequence when you're moving backwards and you can be backweighted or not backweighted if you're doing it right or wrong. Alright, moving on to the next trouble. It is our heel turn. Oh yeah. So again, mostly danced by ladies, but sometimes we have heel turns executed by men as well. Yeah. Uh, feet don't collect or we have troubles turning, we get stuck. Again, we might be, uh, get backweighted in or, heel or turns. Collect but in, in this position? Yes, so many, yeah. many different uh, mistakes can occur during heel turn. Uh, we're going to do a simple exercise here for your heel turns and we're going to go through the sequence of actions necessary for you to collect your feet beautifully and to execute a beautiful heel turn. So what we're going to do here, stand over the right foot, going backwards into the natural heel turn. So we're going to take a step back, right to center balance position. This is a very important moment, that is where we start our rotation. As we're moving backwards, we're going to rise slightly onto the standing leg without the heel uh, rise, without the foot rise, so the heel is still on the floor. From this moment of time, we're going to continue rotating, and this is the moment when our feet are going to collect, and we're going to change weight to go forwards, tall heel. And now we're going to go back into the reverse turn, center balance, rotation and rise, drag your heel under your body, turn and collect, change weight, go out, toe heel. 
Now, a few popular mistakes here. First, not retaining your body. Trying to make a heel turn by only turning your feet, get us turned away from the partner, or we get to slide our centers on each other. Mistake number two. <laughs> I'm already upset. <laughs> Mistake number two. We are trying to collect our feet as fast as possible. That gets our back, gets us back weighted because we're not going through the sequence of actions before our feet actually have to collect. So the moment when the feet collect actually comes much later. After we have risen, after we have turned, that is when our feet collect super last moment. Mistake number three trying to make that heel turn on two heels at the same time. So, heel turn is only done over one heel. That is why it is a heel turn, not a heels turn. So, when we make our natural heel turn, our weight goes back to heel. Now, when we drag our right heel underneath our body, it is going to just hang there underneath our body again. And we're going to make a heel turn over the left heel and then the right foot as it closes becomes a toe and we're going out toe heel. Staying on to the reverse turn, heel, toe heel, heel goes down and the heel turn happens over the right heel. The left foot is just there underneath our body until we weight change and go out. Please remember, one of the reasons for you to collect your feet at all times is a strong drives or just the rise. So Again, if we're talking about heel turn, it's a combination of rise and rotation. But uh, I would suggest you check the rise first and then rotation because rise would be a very powerful uh, cause for you to actually close your feet. And then of course, with the correct footwork and technique, uh, you will have a chance to execute beautiful heel turn. But in my personal opinion and in my experience dancing with uh, many different people, rice always helps to solve this problem. Absolutely agree. All right. Guys, we hope we help you today. And uh, I don't want to say that, but I hope you can resemble to those mistakes because at some point we all are facing them. Please be focused on those little things at all times. Don't expect that once you heard it, you're going to do it automatically, like I sometimes do. <laughs> it is also a mistake. <laughs> yes, this, that is also a mistake. Go practice, even though you've done your choreography many, many times, you still have to be uh, cautious and focused on different things, sometimes few things at the same time. And that, that is really a key to success and not doing those uh, mistakes. We try to cover all the most popular mistakes, if you give us some uh, feedback, we can uh, possibly cover some other things uh, in future. We hope you enjoyed the video and everything was clear. If you have any questions, please write in the comment section. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.